to start off with, I would like to thank the organizers of CAR for giving me this opportunity to present our work in progress on their virtual platform, in which we assess the role of perceived discrimination on suicidal ideation among gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men in Montreal. At the outset, I would like to declare that I have no conflicts of interest. In Canada, as it is globally, gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men, or GBM, experience high rates of HIV and suicidal behavior. Now, the significant levels of stigma that GBM living with HIV encounter has in turn been associated with heightened suicidal risk. Reports mostly out of the US have also shown us that racialized GBM could be at an even higher risk for suicidal ideation than their white counterparts. For the purpose of our analysis, we used data from the Engage study, which is a cohort following GBM in three Canadian cities, Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver, numbers in the parenthesis indicating the number of participants that were enrolled at baseline in each of these three cities. The study recruited cisgender and transgender men who were at least 16 years of age and who reported having sex with another man in the past six months using respondent-driven sampling between February 2017 and August 2019. As part of study procedures, participants completed computer-assisted surveys and biomedical testing. For our analysis, we build on the conceptual framework of intersectionality. That is a framework that focuses on the experiences of people at the intersections of multiple social positions and who could consequently encounter differential power structures that are often shaped by intersecting systems of oppression. Our objectives were to quantify suicidal ideation among GBM located at social intersections that are shaped by ethnicity and HIV status as well as the mediating role of perceived discrimination that operates at these different intersections on suicidal ideation. For the current analysis, we used baseline data only from Montreal and included participants who had complete information on suicidal ideation and ethnicity. The number in the band thesis indicates the number of observations that we used for our analysis. Ethnicity was categorized as white or visible minority according to the Employment Equity Act, and we included Aboriginal people as visible minority. Perceived discrimination was quantified using the shortened everyday discrimination scale, the scores of which varied between one to five, with a higher score indicating a higher perception of discrimination. Cell ideation was dichotomized as any or none, with any indicating at least one instance of suicidal ideation in the prior six months. So to quantitatively build on the intersectionality approach, we defined four intersectional groups based on ethnicity and HIV status. In group one, we included GBM who identified as white and had a negative HIV status. In group two, we included GBM who identified as white and are living with HIV. In group three, we included visible minority GBM who are HIV negative. And in group four, we included visible minority GBM who are living with HIV. To address objective one, for each of these intersectional groups, we described the proportions of suicidal ideation as well as the mean perceived discrimination scores, the result of which I will come to in two slides. To address our second objective, that was to quantify the mediating role of perceived discrimination on suicidal ideation, we used a causal mediation analysis framework, where we also allowed for an interaction between the intersectional group that we defined with the mediator that is perceived discrimination. Now, what this approach effectively does is that it allows for perceived discrimination to vary for each of the four intersectional groups, and also for perceived discrimination to have a different effect each of the intersectional group on suicidal ideation. For this, we employed natural effect models that have been recently developed and estimated odds ratios. We also adjusted for age as a potential confounder in our model. So table one shows the RDS adjusted proportions for suicidal ideation for each of the four intersectional groups that we had defined earlier. Now, the RDS adjustments take into account 
the self-reported network size for each of the participants in the study sample. And along with this, we also report the mean perceived discrimination scores for each of the four intersectional groups that we defined. Overall, from this table, we see that about a third of our study participants reported having had any suicidal ideation in the prior six months before enrollment. And that in general, the proportion of men who report suicidal ideation is lower among those who live with HIV. Surprisingly, we also observed that the mean perceived discrimination scores were not highest amongst visible minority GBM living with HIV, but rather amongst visible minority GBM who are HIV negative. In table two, we report the odds ratios from the natural effect models. Uh, and for this particular analysis, we kept the reference group constant, which was the group of GBM who identified as white and are HIV negative. Now we did this because from the previous slide, you will remember that this group had the lowest mean perceived discrimination scores as compared to the three other groups. We then proceeded to estimate the direct, indirect, and total effect for the three other groups based on the reference group. Now, when we turn our attention to the direct effects, we see that as compared to the reference group, none of the three other comparative groups had significantly different odds of suicidal ideation. But when we look at the indirect effects, we see that for group two and group three, as compared to the reference group, perceived discrimination appeared to increase the odds of suicidal ideation. These findings indicate that perceived discrimination may have a mediatory role on suicidal ideation, functioning through the intersectional groups that have been defined. Similar to the direct effects, the total effects do not show any significant differences in odds between the reference and the three other comparative groups. So we observed lower than expected mean scores for perceived discrimination in visible minority GBM living with HIV in Montreal. And as a group, we have been thinking about this a little bit and it is something that we would like to explore further in the future. Our direct effect estimates indicate that being a member of the intersectional group itself does not appear to be cause for higher suicidal ideation. Or in other words, the attributes that we use to create the intersectional group for this particular analysis themselves do not affect suicidal ideation. Our indirect effects indicate that there is a consistent role of perceived discrimination in producing suicidal ideation among GBM who identify as white and are living with HIV, and among visible minority GBM who are HIV negative. But overall, our total effects indicate that there are no apparent differences in suicidal ideation between the intersectional groups that we defined. There are a few limitations to the analytical approach that we adopted for this particular analysis. The first one is that the fourth group, which is the group of visible minority GBM who are living with HIV, is numerically very small. And so the statistical inferences that we can make to this particular group are also very limited. We also treated ethnicity as a binary variable and reduced visible minorities into a singular group. And as we all know, the lived experiences of one ethnic minority group is very different from another ethnic minority group. The cross sectional nature of baseline data that we also employed for this analysis makes the assessment of temporality for other potential confounders as common causes of either exposure and outcome relationships or mediator and outcome relationships a little challenging. We also only used data from Montreal participants, making the generalizability of our particular findings limited. So in conclusion, Although there are limitations to a quantitative intersectionality approach, it can be useful to highlight the mediating effect of perceived discrimination on suicidal ideation among GVM located at different social positions, especially if suicidal ideation does not appear to be different across intersectional groups. Our future plans involve a three city analysis, additional sensitivity analyses, and a longitudinal analysis. 
So I would first like to thank my PhD advisors, Dr. Joseph Cox and Dr. Erica Moody, our funders, academic partners, community and public health partners, and all the participants of Engage, without whom our work will not be possible. Thank you for listening.